Maybe if you turned on the radar, we'd find out where we are. Well, you heard the man. He ought to know. Lived his life in Mississippi, he says. Take State 35, he says. Cuts across the old Chickasaw Way River. Cuts your driving time in two. Set you down in Biloxi by nightfall, he says. Yeah. What night? Only 35 doesn't cut across the Chickasaw Way. State 63 does. How do we get off US 66, Buzz? 35 does cut across the Scoop Cheeto. Maybe he meant Scoop Cheeto when he said Chickasaw Way. Why not? Anybody can make a little mistake like that. There's a town here, Garth, off the road on a river. Maybe we could get through that way. Look for a side road up ahead now, anywhere. What river's it on? Pascagoula? See what I see, Libby? Yeah. Nobody comes down that road. Nobody but Mr. Garth and me and the sawdust crew. Hurry it across, Libby. Done it. The steering's gone. That's what it feels like. Let's take a look. I'll stop him. This here's private property. How come you here, boy? Why you come down that road? We're looking for a shortcut to Biloxi. We had the accident, not you. It's not our fault your bridge didn't hold. Well, then maybe this will just teach you a lesson, huh? We don't need a lesson. We need a garage. Is there one in town? It ain't open. That is the town of Goth. Forget that name, boy. Just forget it. Look, all we want is a mechanic. What time you got? 18 past 3. I'm going along to the mill now. I'll be back around four. Now, you get that and both your tails out of here the same way you come in before I gets back. <laughs> Car go to your head. We're poor. P O U R. Poor. Son, if you give me all the money in Jackson or Vicksburg, I wouldn't carry you across that river. It just ain't Christian. Forgetting what had happened to me. Yeah? What would happen? Well, I know what's going on. Jesse James is holed over there with his gang. Now, look at here, son. 
There ain't nothing to joke about. Is this your boat? Belongs to Mr. Gar. Like the town? Was that Mr. Garth in the truck? Bad Skinner. He runs a sawmill for Mr. Gar. He also bosses this here boat. A chamber of commerce, too. Suppose we can get this Thad Skinner to say OK. Son, he ain't about to. Well, what if we get him to change his mind? You can change your mules easier. You know my name. The skipper down at the dock says you're in charge of the boat. You say okay, he'll take us across. I already told you, boy. Just hike on out the way you come in and get yourself a lift from somebody on the main road. That's 15 miles, Mr. Skinner. Why can't we use the garage in your town? Just tell me that. You need a lesson in manners, boy. <coughs> Stay out of it, Buzz. Why don't you go and talk to the skipper? How about giving us a hand? Just long enough to get her up the hill. Listen to me, boys. You take a ride on up the street and keep on a going until you're out of Garth. Well, what's with this place? The folks in Garth just like to stay close to home, that's all. What's the matter, Skipper? You got a local virus? You might say. How much for the ride? Oh, nothing. I'm just seeing Thad Skinner getting his come up, that's better than money to me. <laughs> What'd you all use on him, anyway? Not we all. My buddy. You ever hear of Hell's Kitchen? It's a neighborhood in New York. Buzz is one of the survivors. Well, thanks again for your help. Right. So long. Sorry about this morning, Todd. Can I help it if I got a lousy navigator for a buddy? Come on, let's find that garage that isn't open.
Maybe it's the way we dress. Feel it? Feel what? Something in the air. Us? We're not exactly large in Garth. There's a feeling. I almost reach out and touch it. Excuse me. Hey, can we speak to you a minute? I heard all about you two. Most killed Thad Skinner up the mill. Well, you're not about to do me the same, no, sir. I'm fetching me Mr. Dixon. Now, there's a new name. All we've been hearing is God. Mr. Dixon's our sheriff. Well, we should have thought of him. Forget it. He probably made his badge out of pine wood up at the mill. Now, what's wrong with our business? Sorry. I just ain't never seen a jacket like the one you got on. Looks like it feels a May butter. May butter? Grass is freshest in May. Cows give sweeter milk and softer butter then. Fine for chapped hands. We came to buy the store. You wouldn't want to do that. Well, maybe just a dollar's worth. <laughs> you two aren't so fearsome. By the way you talk, you think that. Jenny? Out back, Jenny. Oh, why, Pa? Out back. It's still light outside. If I was you, I'd follow the sun right out of town. You know, nobody makes any sense around here except your daughter. She's the first one that's acted halfway normal. Well, that's because she's younger than the rest of us. What's age got to do with it? There's four characters sitting outside on a fence. My age. Stared at us like we just stepped out of a spaceship. As far as folks in Goth's concerned, you have. All right, you two fellas, come on with me. No fancy tricks, yeah? On what charge? Thad Skinner. Feeding him to the saws. That's your charge. I did that. Don't rile him, he'll shoot. Look at him, like a gator waiting to snap. Jimmy. He ain't no real sheriff. We ain't got no real sheriff here. Mr. Garth just lets him wear that badge. Why don't you go away while you're still ahead? Don't crowd me, boy. Got a message? Work fine. We'll pay for the window. Mr. Garst. In that case, we withdraw the offer. I'd like to see him try to fire that again. There's still a chance. Just a chance if you leave now. Look, we've got a valuable car out there that needs fixing. Worth more than your life? It's more than just a car to me. All right, where do we find the great white father? Garth! Why? This is his town, isn't it? And he wants us out? Okay, this is his problem. You don't understand, boy. He didn't want you in. But you came in. Whether he wants you out, or whether he'll let you out now, I can't say. Thank you. 
Now chop. You hear me? Chop. Garth, who else? Get up. Get up! Mr. Garth? We tried to call, but nobody had lent us a phone. You're the one with the grit in his craw. Busted a window. Mashed a good bird gun. You need a lesson, boy. I saw your class. It stinks. Buzz. You're a troublemaker, boy. I don't like no trouble in Garth. Now, that's what I said to Todd. Right away. As Soon as we hit the main drag, I said to Todd. Now, Todd, that Mr. Garth. Now, there's a man who don't like no trouble in Garth. I mean, a place like Garth, pure paradise. Where else do you find people going out of their way to make life cozy for you? Doing all sorts of nice little things, like uh, giving you a free ride on a buzzsaw. You can do better. I saw you knock that kid off his feet. That was my son. I hit him harder. Well, that's one way to make him look up to you. This time. Try the axe. Yeah. Buzz, your mouth, it's bleeding. Look, isn't there anyone around here you can reason with? Which way was you heading when you come in here? To Biloxi. It's oystering season. A friend of mine's got a lugger. He needs the help, we need the money. Don't lie to me, boy. You come in here in a shiny new car. That don't go with no poor mouth. My father gave me that car, mister, just before he died. It's the only thing I've got left. You don't have to explain anything to him. How else do we get out of here? All right, you get down to that garage. I'll ring up Billy and tell him to make a new part for your car. But just one thing, when you get in that garage, don't you leave there till you're ready to wheel out for good. Might take Billy most of tonight and maybe part of tomorrow to fix her up. Meantime, don't you go wandering about. Folks hereabouts don't take kindly to strangers. I wouldn't want anything to happen to you. I wouldn't want it on my conscience. Thanks, Mr. Garth. For a man with a conscience, he sure cuts deep. How's your lip? I've been hit harder by dames. Hit you again, didn't you? Oh, what was I supposed to do? Hit him back? I swear, Paul, I don't know. Your face needs tending. I had to talk to somebody. Paul, you just gotta stand up to him. Don't you see? You just gotta. I used to talk to myself. I thought if I talk about it enough, if I just get it out here where I can listen to it, try to understand why, then maybe to go away. Like a train was across the valley. But it always tightens in my throat, Jenny, and ties my tongue. It always stays right down here, just right down here, just burning at me. Burning. Like Paul always says, Paul, a burden's lighter when two carries it instead of one. Not this one, Jenny. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> is she a mayor or is dying? Can't rightly tell. <laughs> Guess she is a mayor. That's why. Why is she wearing a skirt? Don't do that again. You're real feather lag, -like, ain't you, boy? Why are you here anyway? Why don't you guys go back and sit on your fence? You do all his fighting for him, man? Oh, no. You see, uh, we cut it up pretty even. Todd here has been to college. Me, I only got to the A's in manual arts, the first A's. So uh, we cut it up like this. Todd here, he takes on the better elements. You know, me, I take on the slobs. Guys like you. Beating up Thad Skinner, that don't make you so almighty, man. We might just fix your wagon yet. Man inside's doing that right now. Sure, starve. Thanks again. Uh, I'll get the basket. Todd, would you think it forward of me if I asked you to walk walk on out away and talk? You're the first stranger I ever talked to, well, except for Mr. Janice, who delivers our supplies, and Mr. Martin brings gas for the trucks. Why? That's just how it is. You and Buzz are the first outsiders to come into Garth for years. Doesn't anyone from Garth ever go anywhere? I mean, outside of Garth? Nobody ever has, long as I know. Oh, maybe Mr. Garth now and then. All right, Jenny. Let's walk. Coming over on the ferry, the skipper said something about this weekend. What's so special about this weekend? I don't know. Except that every November it gets... well, uneasy. And people seem to keep to themselves. It gets awfully quiet. I felt it today when Buzz and I walked up from the dock. Is there something in this town, Jenny? What is it? What's wrong? Paul never would tell me. He says it's better, I don't know. Jenny, where's the rectory? Where does the minister live? We don't have one. Who conducts services? Nobody. The church is shut down. Of course, in our house, Paul always reads from the scriptures on Sunday morning. And Mr. and Mrs. Thompson from next door, they come over. We sing from the sacred harp. Just the four of us. Todd, do you know number 402? That's my favorite. Well, there must have been a minister once. Oh, he left. Why? I don't know why. But I do recollect how it used to be on Sunday. Ma was alive then. She'd do my hair up in curls and starch up my Sunday frock. And there was a smell of frying sausage in the air. And voices on the wind and people laughing. When did it stop, Jenny? When did the minister leave? Oh, I was a little girl then. You and Buzz leave in the morning, don't you? Hmm? Oh, yeah, as soon as Mr. Bolton's done. And I'll never see you again, will I? You remember the good times, didn't you? How it was when you were a little girl and the singing? Well, I'll remember you, Jenny. Jim, I like the way you work. Who are you fellas? Who are we supposed to be? Well, I don't know what you're looking for, but you shouldn't have come to Garth to find it. Looking? Who's looking? Like I say, you live it the way you feel it. When it moves, you go with it. Todd says I got unrest. So what's wrong with unrest? It's as good as anything. Besides, we're all stuck with it. You got it. Sure, 
I see it in your hammer. I've been looking ever since I can remember. Did you ever hear of St. Francis' home for foundlings in New York? That's what I remember. About in a job I had with Todd's dad on a barge in the East River. Now, Todd, he's looking too. He had it made. Yale, prep school, and then just like that, his dad drops dead. So I say, who needs New York? Only the buildings got roots there, and they don't go too deep. Sure, we're looking. Todd says if we keep moving, we'll find a place to plant roots and stick. With me, it's fine. Just moving. You don't make sense, boy. Well, maybe. But you know. You dig. Well, a couple hours, I'll have this hooked up. Why don't you knock off for tonight? Finish it in the morning. There's some blankets in there. Not too greasy. Due for the night. Thanks anyway. We have some sleeping bags. Night. Good night. Or something. Now move! Okay, hero, talk or it comes off at the shoulder. We dropped him off at the stall gate. Where's that? Not more than half a mile down the river. When I come back, what you did to him, I'd do to you. Hey, turn the wagon around. They kept prisoners here after the war. German soldiers. Todd! goes. He ran out. It's no wonder all the noise you were making. Todd. You, you all right? Yeah. Once they beat me up, they had their kicks. Well, didn't you hear me yelling? That's what scared him away. Who? Garth's son. 
What was he doing here? Putting flowers on a grave. Two graves. I don't see any graves, just flowers. I was down at the river, washing the blood out of my mouth. I heard him on his knees here, talking to the ground. Talking and crying both at the same time. He said, it's cold down there, I know, because the sun can't reach you. And he looked up at the tree and cursed it. How can the sun reach you, he said, with that standing over you? I never heard anything like it. It gave me the shivers. Is anyone buried here? Not that I ever heard. What's with this place? What's with this tree? Why is it so much bigger than the others? It's our wolf tree. Your wolf tree? That's what the loggers call it. It's older than the other trees. It's so big, it cuts off all the light from the younger trees around it. They can never grow much when they're near a wolf tree. Let's get out of here. Stay put. I warned him. I didn't want no trouble. He was right there, Mr. Garth. And he was messing around like they knew what they was there for. And Jenny was with him. Mr. Garth, we ain't gonna let him live, are we? Now they've been out there. You get on back, Dixon. You tell all the men to get over to the church house just as soon as they can. <laughs> Jenny, they took her against her will. Took her? Who? Those two who come in here this morning and knocked Dixon through that window? No, not those two. They wouldn't. What kind of father you call yourself? Not those two. They wouldn't. Well, they did. I have to hear it from Jenny, Mr. Garth. Are you calling me a liar? What Jenny says or don't say don't matter. This is between you and me, Slade. And I say they did it. And I say we're going to swing the pair of them higher than a buzzard can fly. No. No, Mr. Garth. A man got to draw the line somewhere. Are you daring to talk back to me, you counter jumper? You do like I tell you. You hated me a long time, haven't you, Slade? Don't think I don't know. Yes. And I know about this, too. You'll tell Garth to go to hell money. Please, Mr. Garth. Oh, don't worry. I ain't gonna take none of it. How much money you got in here? That's almost $200. $200? How long it take you to save it? Ten years. And how much you owe me? I'll tell you. More than 2000 rate you're going, man. It'll be a hundred years before you can march up the hill to that big house of iron and throw that money in my face. Meantime, you do like I say. Now, we all having a meeting over at the church house. You get right on over. And you better act like a father should whose daughter just been drugged in the... I got me a better idea. We're going to show the folks what they done to her.
They say this sort of thing builds character. You know, I think I like this nose better. Well, just stick with me. That's what Dad used to say. He put me on your barge every summer, didn't he? Well, it just doesn't make any sense. Big outfit like that, all gone. I guess in big business, sometimes you get stretched out thin. But with taxes and creditors, at least everybody's paid. I can start even. More than even if you think about that poor Garth kid running around the woods like Hamlet, talking out of his head. How'd you like to have Caleb Garth for an old man? They coming for you. Mr. Garth took Jenny to the church. I couldn't stop him. Run! Thanks, Mr. Slade. Hey, man, you want to try it again? I warned you not to wander. God is my witness. I warned you. They never touched me. Pa, tell them, tell them. <laughs> Why us? Kicks. Look at him. He needs a keeper. All right, boys, let's get him. bury us in the same graves? Dixon, get that rope up there. Hand uh, back. Pull that other one down. Put the noose around it. do it. No prayers. Libby, come here. You're good at such. Make him a prayer, but make it quick. But you go on, get on with it. Paul, you get away. It belongs here more than I do, Paul. Bad. Get him out of here. Chop! Isn't that what you've been asking me to do, Pa? Paul, you give me that ass. Why, Pa? So you can do it again? You know why we done it, Pa. For 15 years, I heard you tell me why, and I still don't know. They killed your brother. Don't that count with you? My brother died overseas with honor. All you've done is to shame his memory. I tell you, they killed him. A soldier. Just like him. Their lies against his. Man against man. Gun against gun. In a war. When the Germans killed your brother, it was the Germans put him underground. Not this German. You didn't even know how old he was. Or what his name was. But I know. I dug so as I could know. Look at him, Pa. Yeah. Ludwig. Ludwig Schmidt, age 19. How could you do it all over again after all we've been through? 
How could you forget even one second of it? Look at that Nazi killer. Look at him. That's the breed that killed my son. Get a good look at him because we're going to fix him good. Now you move off, Reverend. Mr. Garth, turn this boy back to the proper authorities. They're gone, Reverend. Lock, stock, and barrel. And they took all those other Nazi killers with them. Prisoners, Mr. Garth. Boys, most of them like this one. You read that telegram this morning, Reverend. The whole town read it. We regret to inform you that your son... All right, Reverend. You come up to my place. And you come into my Johnny's bedroom. And you look at that empty bed. And then you dare to tell me again to turn the other cheek. Look at him, Mr. Garth. Not even a man yet. He was man enough to escape. He was man enough to hide when they took the others north. Now let's see if he's man enough to die like my boy died. Paul, you come here. I want you to look at the breed that killed your brother. Look at him. God forgive you. Then, give me that axe. Get the Reverend away from him. You watch this boy. Watch it. That you make him watch it. That's it. I want you to see this boy. I want you to remember the kind that killed your kin. I want you to remember it for the rest of your life. I swore, as long as I lived, I'd never touch an axe again. You're holding one now, Paul. Chop the wolf tree down and let the sun in. They never touched Jenny. I was out here tonight and I saw them. Paul's right! Jenny come home the same as she left. Mr. Garth tore her dress to make it look like those fellas there done it. I'm not afraid any longer, Mr. Garth. How about it, Mr. Garth? He lied to you. He used you just as he's always used everybody. Like he used the town to cover up a personal crime. Like he spread his shame over all of us. On time. Stand clear, Paul. I'm gonna fell me a tree. A wolf tree. you reckon the earth will keep turning? Long enough, Mr. Bolton. Well, that's how long that'll keep turning. Thanks. It's us that thanks both of you. Might say you set us free. You and Paul, he ain't stopped all night. Not a man in town wouldn't like to spell him, but, well, might say he's chopping her down for all of us.
people are leaving. How about you? I don't know. Garth used to be a fine place to live. Maybe now it'll be a fine place again. So long. Bye. 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 Come on in, huh? Well, this is your goodbye, not mine. How do you spell Biloxi? Jenny? I'd give you an address, in case you ever felt like writing, but uh, after Biloxi, now you know Buzz, swinging on a star. How about if I write you? I don't know where we'll be. Pa says we gotta stay till the sheriff comes and clears those who can be cleared. Certainly your father isn't responsible for... Pa feels just as guilty as Mr. Garth, Todd. He kept the secret for 15 years. So did the rest of them. Pa says that don't excuse him. Well, if you do decide to stay here, it'll be a different town now. A better town. And we'll try to get back. Goodbye, Todd. You shut up. Because I got no manners. Hey, why so serious? She's a nice kid. They're all nice kids. <laughs> 